Instead of focusing on winning arguments, we're teaching the basic fundamentals of sales and marketing and how we can use them to win in the world of politics, teaching you how to meet people where they're at on the issues they care about. Welcome to The Brian Nichols Show. You know, it's still possible that Mike Lee could end up on the Supreme Court for 25 or 30 years eventually, depending on when the next Republican is elected president. And if he didn't join the GOP, if he was just some awesome libertarian lawyer from Utah, which no shame in that. I mean, he'd still be a badass. Don't get me wrong. But if he were just some libertarian lawyer, member of the LP from Utah that none of us had ever heard of, that's the difference in, in scope between the LP and the GOP. You're talking a Supreme Court justice versus some random guy in Salt Lake City. You know what I mean? So it's like, it's I, I just want these people to join. I, I, you know, for guys like Mike Lee, Rand Paul, Ron Paul, their their career arc does not look the way it has. They they haven't they wouldn't be winning hearts and minds for liberty like they are without the Republican Party and the infrastructure that the Republican Party has built over the last 150 years. Well, what are you speaking to, right? And and here I'll put my sales executive hat back on because I know everybody right. hates it. I mean, at the end of the day, everything is sales, right? You're either right. selling yourself an idea, you know, 100%. a product, and, and here's the the reality, right? You're talking about value. You're talking about the fact that people look at the the GOP is a means of value and that value is a platform the value is that you're able to then get your ideas out to a a, an audience that you otherwise probably wouldn't talk to and you wouldn't reach and and here's the dirty little secret brady this is what a lot of libertarians don't want people to know is that they don't want the the movement to grow they they want it to stay this you know puritan like movement where you have your, your core group of members who they've passed the, the religious fundamental testing and they are the, the, the purest and the best out there and they want to be the, you know, the, the kings and queens of being right. And, and that's great. You know, they, they, they have been for the longest time and now they're realizing that if this thing does in fact grow and we do end up bringing more people into the movement, number one, you're going to see the movement overtly become less libertarian that's going to happen and the reason being is because when we first get people into the movement they're not going to be libertarian they're going to be asking questions and they need to be educated and it's going to be on those you know those og members right to, to be the folks who are going to be leading the, the charge and helping educate them along the way. In the world of wine, there are so many choices, and that's why Blood of Tyrants Wine has tyrants losing their heads. Whether you're looking for a new go-to at home or want to impress your friends at a party, Blood of Tyrants Wine has you covered. And if you're trying to get rid of some pesky tyrants in your life, well, we've got that covered too. Head to briannicholshow.com forward slash wine and get $5 off your order. One more time, briannicholshow.com forward slash wine. Free men don't ask permission. So take a sip. You'll be glad you did. Unfortunately, we've seen too often than not, you know, as Larry Sharp will bring in the, the folks as the recruiter, then you'll see the, the folks in the movement say, oh, these aren't libertarians. And then they'll send them. <laughs> back. And, and it's like, well, no kidding. I, I, I didn't say they were. We, we need to convert them. So that that needs to be step one is knowing that we need to bring people in. But step number two is understanding that as we grow you're going to have more people that traditionally you aren't going to agree with in the movement, and that's okay. When you look at the Republican Party and the Democratic Party, for that matter, they are parties of coalitions, right? 100%. You know, you look, and you, yeah, like, you look at the left, right? We had, what, 20 candidates on the left uh, on the Democratic stage for the, the primaries here. And, I mean, you had folks like Tulsi Gabbard and Andrew Yang up there with folks like Elizabeth Warren, Bernie Sanders, and then Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. Now, I would say all three of those kind of bubbles are very different in terms of the way that they would approach politics within the Democratic Party. But you know what? As libertarians, I could see a, a Tulsi and Andrew Yang coalition being much more likely to side with libertarians on certain issues than the likes of, you know, someone like a, a elitist, like a, a, you know, Elizabeth Warren or the you know the, the folks out there who are the oligarchs in the Joe Biden camp, right? They're not going to care so much about principle or, or you know what's right or wrong, but more so what keeps power. So that's why I say you know when we're looking at growing this this greater liberty movement, we have to understand that as we bring people in, you're going to naturally see them go into coalitions, and that's okay. Those coalitions are fine, 
And you're going to see this kind of sway back and forth. And we see it in the big parties, right? You see a conservative takeover. Then you see the neocon takeover. Then you see the populist takeover. And it goes back and forth and back and forth. The GOP and the Democratic parties, they've been showing us that this happens in the Libertarian Party. We're learning it ourselves, whether it's the you know, the pragmatics or the, the, the Mises caucus, whoever it's going to be. Here's the reality. They have to be the party that's going to be leading, right, leading us towards some ultimate goal. And I think, Brady, here's the, the unfortunate reality, right? Libertarians too often confuse uh, leadership and, and power structures, right? So they look at somebody who is in a leadership role and they instantly have this reservation towards them because they confuse a leader with somebody who has power and that power that could be used against them versus somebody who is trying to guide a collective group of people for you know this one common goal. And you know while we're not in a collective mindset, we are trying to get this one common goal. And this goal is individual liberty across the board. And, and once we're able to, uh, you know, in Jason Stapleton's analogy, you know, we're on this spaceship through space towards Liberty Land, right? And we're on this you know, spaceship together and we are so freaking far away that like for you to say like, hey, listen, I can't be on this, this spaceship to Liberty Land with these folks because they're too different from me. It's like, listen, you we're in the same church, just different pews, folks. Thanks for listening to The Brian Nichols Show. Find more episodes at briannicholsshow.com.